Hi everybody, Cheryl and Lady coming to you today from the home. And there's Lady right there. That's Frodo. So I've always had a love of gardening and it came from um, way back. My great grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, they all had summer gardens. When I was out on my own, I started, you know, a backyard garden too. But then, um, you know, I got busy with work and traveling for work. For a couple of years, I didn't grow anything. But then, in March of 2020, the lockdown happened. Things became a little hard to find. And I could not find celery. And that really kind of freaked me out. Celery? Really? I'm on camera because my brother and my sister told me I should. Anyway, um, well, I knew what I had to do, and I also dug really deeply into uh, learning much more about gardening than I ever knew before. I fell in love with gardening channels on YouTube, and I watched everything, probably thousands of videos, from uh, small backyard gardeners to market gardeners to homesteaders, and I learned a lot. One of the things that I learned, which I never even thought about before, was that I could grow vegetables throughout the winter and it would give me a real head start going into the spring next year. Last year I sowed my cool weather crops in July and I planted them out Labor Day weekend. At the time I hadn't thought to try to keep them alive all winter, but I gave it a shot and I got some cover on before the first freeze. So before the first day of spring, I had had a steady supply to harvest. And I'm telling you this because if I can do it successfully, you can too. I planted spinach and kale. I actually harvested some, oh, about two weeks ago and some of the spinach too. That's continued to grow. So the other day I had a break for a little while because my power went out and it was a lovely sunny but cold December day and I'd been on the fence as to when I should cover my crops. Uh, we hadn't had more than a few nights with frost warnings but I knew the inevitable freezes were coming and I decided I should take advantage of the break and finally cover them. So this year we have broccoli, chard, spinach, a variety of different lettuce in those little pots kale, celery, onions, garlic, Brussels sprouts, leeks, and purple sprouting broccoli. I started these indoors in July and I planted them out in the early fall and the only exceptions were the celery and I sowed the celery this past February, planted them in April and they did so well all year and I hope they'll continue to produce uh, throughout next year too and I can't tell you how relieved I was that I didn't have to worry about finding celery at the store. There's a variety of ways to protect your plants in the winter. Greenhouses are beautiful and functional. Uh, they also cost thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars. So they're completely out of reach for me. So here we have a polytunnel. And uh, all of the cool gardeners all over the world have these. They're very functional. But um, unfortunately, in my tiny backyard, I think it would look like, uh, I don't know, a spaceship landed or something. Cold frames give great protection. They're probably the most affordable option for people in uh, zone six or less, but they can still be pricey if you don't make it yourself. Many people do. They use their um, reclaimed wood and, and reclaimed old windows. But I'm not handy and I don't want to put the time in to figure it out. So I'm just being honest. Uh, maybe another time. Some people use these cloches and they can be glass or clear plastic. Uh, these can be a little costly though if you need to buy a bunch of them. So, But you can also make these very easily with recycled clear soda bottles or milk bottles. But what I found worked for me and what I could afford and what was also really very easy are these floating row covers. I got them last fall. They were only about 30 bucks for all of it. They went through last winter and they're in really good shape still. I cut them to fit last year's garden layout, but I was able to work with the different pieces this year too. 
this row cover is clear plastic. It's pretty thick, and the wire hoops are built in, which means you don't have to do anything about building anything. Uh, I like using the hoops because the plant leaves of the taller plants don't get squished. It's important, though, when you put this down, not just to secure the sides, but the ends, too. And for that, I use these anchor pin things to do that. All in all, I find that the clear plastic lets in plenty of light. It is basically a mini greenhouse. More affordable and also very easy to use is this mesh cloth. And I use this to extend the life of my warm weather crops like my tomatoes. And here it is covering uh, my kale and my Swiss chard over a teepee. One pack was about 12 bucks and there's a lot of it. It's also really versatile. It can protect plants from pests like white flying caterpillars and aphids and hungry animals from munching them. And it also works as a shade cloth to protect tender seedlings from frying in the sun. It's not as heavy duty as the plastic, so when it gets really cold, I'm gonna add another layer. And I'm also going to throw this over the plastic covers when it gets really cold to add a layer of warm air. Well, it looks like I did that just in time, huh? So overnight we had a light snow and, oh look, there's a little squirrel eating. And uh, I woke up to a beautiful white Christmas Eve. So you just can't cover your plants with plastic and leave them be all winter. If you're gonna get a lot of snow that's gonna be around for a few days, you're gonna wanna brush the snow off to let the light in. And when it rains, not much water is gonna get to the plants. So if it's mild enough for it to rain, you should uncover your plants and let them enjoy it. Just make sure you don't leave them uncovered if it's going to turn to freezing rain or freeze later. And so for the next five days or so here, it's going to be in the 40s overnight, and we're supposed to get some rain, so today I opened up the covers. Also, pay attention to those rare warm days in the winter. Last January, we had a record high temperature of 69 degrees, and there can be about a 20 to 30 degree temperature increase inside the row cover when it's sunny. So that means a 60 degree day could heat the air underneath up to 80 to 90 degrees. So if you're gonna get an unusually warm day, you're gonna to wanna to remove the cover so the plants don't overheat and fry. So when do you do all this? Well, it's all about the difference between a frost, a freeze, a hard freeze, and the frozen ground and the plants that are affected by them. A frost can happen when the air temperature is between 33 and 36 degrees. That's going to harm plants that are frost tender or not frost hardy, like the tomatoes, peppers, squash, eggplants, cucumbers, things like that. Before a frost, you're going to harvest what you can from these plants and or throw some protection over them. A freeze happens when the temperature drops to 32 degrees or lower. That killed my frost tender plants, except for my cherry tomato that was under cloth. A hard freeze is when the temperature dips to 28 degrees or lower for a few hours, usually at night. Hardy winter plants like these don't mind that and actually taste sweeter when the sugars are released that protect them. If the temperature rises to above freezing the next day, the ground doesn't freeze yet. Frozen ground happens when you have five or more days below freezing. If it's even colder, it can happen faster. Now, the entire ground doesn't freeze, obviously, and how far down frozen soil goes depends on your area and your weather, but keeping the air around them and the top layers of soil under them warm will help keep your hardy vegetables alive. Last year, I was able to harvest through the winter, like these carrots I pulled up before the soil froze, and the broccoli, kale, spinach, chard, all made it through to the end of May when it just got too hot for them and they went to flower. So what plants can you grow in your garden over the winter? Well, to know that, you'll need to know your zone. And if you don't know your zone, I've put the link to the USDA Plant Hardiness Zone Map. Uh, just go there and enter your address and it'll give you your average coldest temperatures. So I hope it was helpful and I hope it encouraged you if you haven't tried it before to next year grow a, a winter garden. And um, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos this winter about organizing uh, your gardening tasks and cutting through the confusion on how to select seeds and how to start seeds and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, please subscribe and follow me. And if 
you like this, please hit the like button. And um, on behalf of Lady and I, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and hope you have health and love in the new year. Bye. Say goodbye, lady. Say goodbye. Lady says goodbye.